Hello, welcome to our study of stoichiometry. Now stoichiometry is that aspect of chemistry that has to do with relative amounts of materials involved in a reaction or in a chemical change. For example, when a reaction takes place, different things could um, be on the mind of the chemist carrying out that reaction. It's possible that he's looking out for color changes, he's looking out for formation of precipitates, but then it's also possible that he's interested in what quantities of reactants would give a certain quantity of products or what quantity of one reactant is required to react with another quantity of a second reactant, stuff like that. So once we deal with quantities, we would be in that aspect of chemistry called stoichiometry. Now, stoichiometry is all about the mole. So for us to understand stoichiometry properly, I would need to tell us about the meaning of the word mole. Now, mole as a word is just like this word, dozen. The word dozen means the number 12. So that when we say a dozen eggs, for example, we mean 12 eggs. Similarly, when we say a mole in chemistry, the word mole, which we can abbreviate as M-O-L, remember, when we write grams, we don't have to write grams in full, we, approximate, we abbreviate it as, what? as G. So M-O-L-E, mole, is usually abbreviated as M-O-L, mole. So when we write mole, M-O-L, like this, it refers to the number... 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 23, which we commonly call Avogadro's number. So one mole of sodium atoms, for example, would be 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 23 sodium atoms. One mole of oxygen molecules would be 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 23 oxygen molecules. So molecules for molecules, atoms, atoms like that. It's just the word mole that changes to the number 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 23. So that's the meaning of the word, the mole. Now, having talked about the meaning of the word mole, there are some small things here. Yes, yeah, small but um, sometimes mighty. Now, we need to draw clear dividing lines between. Like on this line, I have mass number and atomic mass. Um, in many situations, we find people telling others that those two terms are interchangeable, that they mean the same thing. Well, not exactly. Mass number is a number, while atomic mass is a mass. So let's see the difference. Let's say you had an element like this, written in symbol as X. The number up here represents the number of protons and neutrons that that atom has and that number will be referred to as mass number for example if the number up here represented as a were 31 then it will mean that this atom has a mass number of 31 meaning it has a total of 31 protons and neutrons in its nucleus but those 31 protons and neutrons, what do they weigh? What's their total weight? Well, approximately, we say their total weight will be 31 AMU. So the mass of those 31 particles is what we refer to as atomic mass. So atomic mass is a mass and it has a unit. The unit of atomic mass is atomic mass unit amu if you don't want to write amu you can also write the dalton so one dalton is one amu but when we write dalton we abbreviate it as da so the dalton is the amu and that's the unit of atomic mass but mass number is just a number it doesn't have units all right so that's the difference between mass number and atomic mass they have the same numerical values but one of them has a unit because it's a mass but the other does not have a unit. Now, what about molecular mass? Molecular mass simply means mass of a molecule. And to have molecular mass, therefore, the substance being considered must be a molecule. An atom cannot have molecular mass. Any substance to have molecular mass must be what? A molecule. 
Then molar mass. Molar mass means the mass of one mole. Molar mass. Mass of one mole. So mass of one mole of anything is what we refer to as molar mass of that thing. Now let me quickly mention that atomic mass and molecular mass share units. So molecular mass is also measured in AMU, atomic mass units. Whereas molar mass has its own unit as gram per mole. So molar mass is measured in gram per mole and it is the mass of one mole of substance whereas molecular mass is the mass of a molecule of a substance. So if we were to use this table now to try to clearly finish that up, this is oxygen as a first element. Now we know oxygen to be represented as 16, 8. Then we also know that oxygen can exist in the form of atoms as well as in the form of molecules. Therefore, the atomic mass, which is mass of a single atom of oxygen, would be 16 AMU. I'm picking the 16 from here. Then for the molecular mass, a molecule of oxygen is O2. So if O is 16, you would expect that O2 would be 32. So I'm going to write here 32, but the unit remains the same, AMU. After all, a molecule of oxygen is nothing but two atoms. So the unit remains the same. Then what about potassium? Potassium is written as 39, 19. That's the representation. It means that an atom of potassium will have a mass of 39 AMU. Now, interestingly, potassium does not form molecules. So because it does not form molecules, we cannot give it a molecular mass. Instead, it only has an atomic mass. Then, CO2 is a compound. NaCl is also a compound. Why are they called compounds? Because each of them is made up of atoms of two different elements joined together by chemical bonds. So when you have atoms of at least two elements, maybe two, three, four, and so on, but at least two elements, you have their atoms together and they are held together by bonds, then you have a compound. But while the bond here is covalent, the bond down there, it's not covalent, it is electrovalent, which is ionic. Therefore, for CO2, a covalent molecule, yes, that reminds me, when you have a compound that is covalent, yes, you can call it a molecule, but a compound that is not covalent cannot be called a molecule. That means these two are compounds, no doubt. But this upper one can be called a molecule. So why is that compound suitably called a molecule? Because of the type of bond in it. It is covalent. All molecules are covalent. So as long as it's a molecule, it will be covalent. But this one, it's a compound, we agree. But is it also a molecule? No. Why is it not qualified to be called a molecule? Because it is not covalent. So to be called a molecule, the basic requirement is the substance must be covalent. So this guy is a molecule, but that guy is not. Therefore, atomic mass, none of them will have atomic mass. Why? They are not atoms. Atoms are just single elements like these ones. These are not atoms, so there's no atomic mass for any of these guys. Then what about molecular mass? This guy will have a molecular mass because it's a molecule. And what would be its molecular mass? It would be 44 AMU. How did I get 44? Carbon here is 12. Oxygen is 16, so O2 is 32. So 12 plus 32 will give me 44. So that's how I got 44. Now for NaCl, sodium chloride, can I give it a molecular mass? No. Why? it is not a molecule so what if i decide to do this calculation na is 23 cl is 35.5 i add up and i get 58.5 well i can write that 58.5 here amu but i will not call it molecular mass instead i will call it formula weight 
I'll call it formula wheat because electrovalent species like NaCl that cannot be called molecules will be called formula units. So we can have one molecule of CO2, two molecules of HCl, five molecules of ammonia. These are all covalent, so we can have molecules. But for NaCl, we can't say one molecule. We can say one formula unit. And as we say one formula unit, the mass of a formula unit, the weight of a formula unit is called formula weight just as the weight of a molecule or the mass of a molecule is called molecular mass so coming up here now let's see if that information has registered or not look at these two substances ch4 and kbr ch4 and kbr are compounds but only one of them is a molecule by virtue of the covalent bonding in it Yes, that is methane. So because methane is a molecule, it will have molecular mass. But in the case of KBR, it's not a molecule. Why? It is electrovalent. So what would it be since it's not a molecule? It would be a formula unit. Now that formula unit, what would be its mass? What kind of mass will it have? It will have what we call formula mass. If you don't call it formula mass, you call it formula weight. So formula weight or formula mass is to electrovalent compounds as molecular mass is to covalent compounds. Then finally, molar mass. To get molar mass, you will use the molecular mass or formula weight, which means in the case of any cell that doesn't have molecular mass, I will take its formula weight to this side, repeat it at 58.5, but give it the unit gram per mole. In the case of CO2, it has a molecular mass. So I'm going to write here 44, but this time grams per mole. Look at oxygen. Oxygen has the atomic mass, it has the molecular mass. But which one are we going to use as the molar mass? We already said molecular mass. So that gives us 32 grams per mole. Now finally, for potassium that doesn't form molecules, that does not have molecular mass or formula mass, what it has is atomic mass. So it will make do of what it has. So its molar mass will be 39 grams per mole. So if I were to take this one step further, what these two values mean for potassium is this one potassium atom just one atom of potassium will have a mass of 39 amu but if you take 6.02 times 10 raised to power 23 potassium atoms which is now one mole of potassium atoms then they will weigh 39 grams that's why we're saying 39 grams per mole, not per atom, but what? Per mole, that is per uh, 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 atoms collected together, all right? If I were to stress that again, because I believe many of us may still not get the point, imagine that these were two scales. On this scale, I put K, just one K. Then on that scale, I put 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 23 K atoms. Now, this single K atom will weigh 39 Daltons, which is 39 AMU. But this group of K atoms, which is a mole, will weigh 39 grams. So that 39 grams is not atomic mass. It is not the mass of an atom. Atomic mass is the mass of one atom. Molar mass is the mass of a mole of atoms and it is measured in grams per mole, but this is measured in AMU. Now, having said those, the last thing I'll tell us before going into stoichiometry proper is the fact that for gases, any gas you are dealing with, whether it is, um, you know, a gaseous element like oxygen or nitrogen, or it is a gaseous compound like CO2 or SO2, just know that one mole of a gas 
at standard temperature and pressure as long as that one mole of gas is maintained at STP will occupy a fixed volume and that volume is usually 22.4 dm cube which is 22.4 liters so we say one mole of a gas maintained at STP should occupy a volume of 22.4 dm cube so which means which means for oxygen now, one mole of oxygen that has a mass of 32 AMU, not 16 this time, 32 AMU will weigh 22, so will occupy rather 22.4 dm cube. So look at this, look at this. O2, <clears throat> this is an oxygen molecule. This is one mole of oxygen molecules. This one mole of oxygen molecules will have a mass of 32 grams, all right? Oh, sorry. Yeah, 32 grams. Then it will occupy a volume of 22.4 dm cube and will contain 6.02 times 10 raised to power 23 molecules. Look at this. One mole of oxygen molecules means what number of oxygen molecules 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 23 oxygen molecules what will be its mass because we are dealing with one mole now one mole then we're talking about 32 grams not amu please grams 32 grams if i had just said an oxygen molecule yes it should have been 32 amu but one mole of oxygen molecules 32 grams and that 32 grams will occupy what volume 22.4 dm cube now what about one mole of carbon dioxide molecules how many molecules will be in it the same avogadro's number of carbon dioxide molecules what volume will it occupy it will occupy the same 22.4 dm cube but what will be its mass CO2 is 44, but because we are saying one mole, then it will be grams. So one mole of CO2 is 44 grams and will occupy a volume of 22.4 dm cube. But one mole of oxygen is 32 grams and will occupy a volume of 22.4 dm cube. I actually had to hurry through this part so that we don't spend all of our time doing this. All right, because this introduction, yes, it's vital, but um, considering the fact that we're using um, an online video, not a live class, we try to make it very brief. And in the course of solving questions, some of these gray areas will get clearer. So you just proceed to watch video two, where we start solving questions on stoichiometry, and you'd see how these things apply. So in the next video now, I'll show some um, aspects of basic stoichiometry whereas in the third one i'll look at stoichiometry of solutions where we talk about molarity molality and normality